My name is Ellie, and I'm 33 years old. A year ago, I divorced my husband and now live with my one-year-old daughter, Skylar. Although we're not wealthy, being able to witness my daughter's growth up close makes me happy. Every morning, it's become a routine to drop Skylar off at the nearby daycare before heading to work. The daycare teacher greets Skylar. Good morning, Skylar. I replied. Thank you. Mommy is going to work. Do your best. After giving Skylar a tight hug, I leave her in the care of the teacher. After my divorce from my ex-husband, I discovered I was pregnant. Despite trying to reach out multiple times, he never responded. With no other options, I chose to become a single mother. I also have an older sister named Josephine, who is one year older than me. Interestingly, Josephine also divorced around the same time. Unlike me, she's beautiful and excels academically. Our mother doted on Josephine, praising her good grades since childhood. Josephine is so smart, our mother would say. She even suggested that Josephine take piano lessons. I wanted to join too, but our mother dismissed me, saying, Ellie, it won't work. You're not good at remembering things. Only our father appreciated my talents. He praised my drawing skills and encouraged me. Meanwhile, our mother insisted that a beautiful, high-achieving child like Josephine could marry a wealthy man. True to our mother's words, Josephine married a co-worker and lived in a luxury apartment. However, her husband couldn't tolerate her spoiled behavior, and they divorced. One day, out of the blue, Josephine called me. We hadn't been in touch for a while, so I hesitantly answered. She said, Hi, it's Josephine. Long time no see. How are you? I replied, Josephine, it has been a while. I'm fine. What's going on? Josephine hesitated before asking, Could you do me a favor? Can you take care of my six-month-old daughter for a while? She's not as cute as me, cries a lot, and frankly, she's not adorable. I'm getting depressed, and I need a break. Listening to her, I realized Josephine had inherited our mother's personality. I firmly declined, explaining that I already had my hands full with my one-year-old daughter. And so, I hung up the phone, unable to help Josephine with her request. It happened two days later. During the day, the doorbell rang, and when I opened the door, there stood Josephine. I've brought my daughter Claire. There are diapers and a change of clothes inside. Please take care of her. Wait a minute. I told you I couldn't handle this. Please help your dear big sister. Just for two or three days, please. As Claire, who had been sleeping, started crying, I couldn't refuse. I agreed to take care of her for a few days. Okay, just two or three days. Make sure to pick her up by evening. Thank you. This really helps. I promise I'll come back. With that, Josephine left without even looking at Claire's face. A few hours later, unable to find any milk as Claire continued crying even after a diaper change, I decided to take Skylar in my arms and go shopping with Claire in the stroller. Josephine's irresponsible nature hadn't changed since our childhood. Walking along the twilight street, how can she leave her daughter without milk? Unbelievable. The next day, I explained the situation to the daycare, and they agreed to take care of Claire as well. Taking care of two babies alone is tough. Don't worry. Despite the sudden situation, I was grateful for their understanding. 
However, three days passed, and a week went by, but Josephine didn't come to pick up Claire. No matter how many times I called, it went to voicemail, and there was no response to my messages. Eventually, the announcement said, the number is not in service. I was shocked and contacted my father, but he didn't know Josephine's whereabouts either. Josephine had disappeared after leaving her six-month-old daughter with me right after my divorce. I considered having my parents look after Claire temporarily, but given their age, it wasn't feasible. They agreed to provide financial assistance, and with the daycare's help, I continued caring for Claire. When I asked my father for Josephine's apartment address and spoke to the building manager, they informed me. She moved abroad a while ago due to her husband's job. It seemed she hadn't returned to the United States. How could she leave her child behind? I was speechless. I couldn't fathom Josephine's nerves. Wasn't she worried about Claire? I felt both contempt and anger toward Josephine as a person and a mother. Mommy, I'm hungry. Claire said. Skylar chimed in. I'm hungry too. All right, all right. I'm making something now. Just wait. Three years had passed since then. Skylar was now four years old, and Claire was three and a half. My niece Claire called me mom and believed I was her real mother. Over time, I began to feel the same way. Although I hadn't given birth to her, I raised Claire with the same love and care as Skylar. It's been three years, and I'm thinking of officially adopting Claire, I told the daycare teacher. You still haven't heard from your sister? Yes, but Claire feels like my own daughter now. Our parents are elderly, so I'll work harder. What was once a struggle had become routine. Skylar and Claire, close in age, shared hand-me-downs, and I watched them together with a smile wherever they went. One day, on the way home from shopping at the department store, a man approached me. He was what you might call a scout. He said, Your daughters are so cute. If their mother agrees, would they be interested in becoming child models? I looked at the business card he handed me. It belonged to a modeling agency. Would Skylar and Claire like to give it a try? I asked. Skylar replied. I want to try it. Claire, let's do it together. Claire chimed in. Yeah, let's do it with Skylar. Seeing their interest, I decided to let them give it a shot. Skylar and Claire had big, round eyes and silky hair making them quite popular in the neighborhood. We made an agreement that I'd only take modeling gigs on my days off, so it wouldn't interfere with their school life. In the beginning, they appeared in the lower sections of magazines, but as time passed, about six years after signing with the modeling agency, they grew to grace the covers of magazines. Friends would say, Skylar and Claire are adorable, and it's amazing they're on magazine covers. Yet, both daughters remained down-to-earth and continued their normal school lives, studying with friends and discussing their favorite idols after class. By the way, it's been nine years since Josephine went missing. Just as I was thinking about this, an unexpected event occurred. Skylar, Claire, and I were browsing stationery at the department store when I heard a woman's voice. You really love crepes, don't you? A man next to her added. With lots of whipped cream, it's incredibly delicious. As we walked toward the next shop, I crossed paths with Josephine. Her familiar voice made me turn around, and she was with the man. Josephine looked completely different, no makeup, messy hair, and wearing a tracksuit, but there was no doubt it was her. I called out. Josephine! She seemed to notice me but ignored me and kept walking. However, 
I was convinced it was my sister because she had two distinctive moles under her left lip, just like Josephine. This time, I grabbed Josephine's arm and tried again. Wait, Josephine! She turned around, looking annoyed. Who? Oh, it's Ellie. I didn't recognize you at all. It's definitely Josephine. What have you been doing for these nine years without any contact? Ellie, it's none of your business. Let's go, Ryan. Wait a minute. How can it not be my business? As Josephine tried to leave, I noticed the man she was with. He had a hat pulled low over his face, but it was unmistakably my ex-husband, Ryan. And they were holding hands, both wearing matching rings on their left ring fingers. Ryan? Why are you with Josephine? Ellie, it's been a while. Since the divorce, it's been nine years? Maybe ten? Ryan greeted me with a wry smile. Not only did Josephine and I accidentally reunite, but it turned out they had remarried. As I learned the shocking truth, Josephine grinned and said, Well, it seems I've been caught. By the way, how's that defective one doing? I replied, Defective? What are you talking about? This is Claire. And next to her is my daughter, Skylar, Ryan's daughter. Skylar and Claire, despite being children, had long realized that their parents were different. But they simply said, Mom is our real parent. Seemingly unfazed by the lack of blood relation. When asked, I was initially taken aback, but seeing the two of them together made me realize that blood ties didn't matter. Josephine and Ryan were equally shocked by Skylar and Claire. Josephine exclaimed, Claire has transformed into such a beauty. She's stunning. Tall, stylish, just like me. Ryan stammered. Wait a minute. My daughter. What's going on? We didn't have any children, did we? I explained. I discovered the pregnancy after our divorce. I called several times, but you never answered. Now, we live happily together, regardless of blood ties. Josephine then pointed at Skylar and Claire, saying, Wait, are these two the child models Skylar and Claire? Same names and everything! Excitedly, she picked up a magazine from the nearby bookstore, showing their cover photos. I was amazed! Claire has become so beautiful! Josephine said. Ryan added, I'm surprised too! Having such a gorgeous daughter! Josephine continued, so Ellie raised them all by herself? Impressive. But I was more concerned about Josephine's whereabouts during those years. I had called repeatedly and even visited her apartment, only to learn from the building manager that she had moved abroad. Even though Claire was just a baby, did Josephine ever consider her feelings? Nine years of leaving her with me, neglecting her own child, was unforgivable. Josephine defended herself. Ryan's successful business forced me to go overseas for money. Sometimes kids get in the way of our lives, you know? Back then, Claire was plain, noisy, and a burden. I couldn't fathom such thoughts toward one's own child. I squeezed Skylar and Claire's hands tightly. Josephine retorted. If Ellie insists... I'll take Claire back. Kudos for raising her as a single mother. Now, leave it to Ryan and me. Without remorse, she grabbed Claire's hand. But Claire pushed it away forcefully. Ouch!
Ouch! What are you doing? Josephine exclaimed. Claire held on to me, glaring at Josephine. Don't touch me. You're not my mother. My real mom is right here. Stop saying whatever you want. It was true. The last time Josephine saw Claire was when she was six months old. Since then, I have showered her with unconditional love every day. Suddenly appearing and claiming to be her mother was terrifying for Claire. Once I parted ways with Josephine and Ryan, I returned home. Claire asked. You won't give me to that lady we met earlier, right? Skylar and I won't be separated, will we? I reassured them. Both Skylar and Claire are my precious daughters. I'll never let anyone take you away. I love you so much. Hearing this, Skylar and Claire fell asleep feeling secure. However, from that day on, Josephine visited our home daily, insisting on taking Claire. When I asked Claire again about her preference, she expressed her desire to continue living with me and Skylar. When I honestly conveyed this to Josephine, she erupted in anger, shouting at our doorstep. A few days later, our parents expressed their desire to see their grandchildren. Skylar asked, Is Grandpa coming today? Claire exclaimed, Yay! I can't wait to see Grandpa! Since my mother had a difficult personality, it was natural for the girls to be closer to my father. As the time for our parents' arrival approached, I received a call. It was from the police. Josephine had ambushed Claire after school, attempting to force her into a car. Not only that, Ryan was there, trying to take Skylar as well. I informed the police that the culprits were my sister and ex-husband, and they escorted the two back home. Fortunately, Skylar and Claire were safe, thanks to the police's intervention. Facing Josephine and Ryan, my father shouted, what on earth are you adults doing? Do you realize how terrified the children were? Josephine retorted. Claire keeps saying she won't be my daughter, and it infuriates me. So, I had no choice but to take her by force. Ryan explained. I learned about Skylar's existence, and I wanted to be part of her life too. Josephine added. Besides, Claire is my biological daughter. What's the problem? My father responded. Exactly. You left her with Ellie for nine years without a single contact. Yet suddenly appearing and scaring the kids. Never again. It was unbelievable that they stalked Claire despite her firm refusal. Their immature actions filled me with anger. While today ended with a stern warning, I knew the scars would remain in our daughter's hearts. But Skylar and Claire are both adorable, so I can understand feeling tempted to kidnap them. My mother's personality remains unchanged, and she says unbelievable things. Although she visits her grandchildren, she treats Skylar and Claire differently. My father notices this and has recently scolded my mother. What nonsense! Can't you control what comes out of your mouth? My father, who adores Skylar and Claire, shouted at my mother. There's no need to yell. I simply spoke the truth. She said this, sulking about being scolded. Hey, how about this? Ellie and I could take turns raising Skylar and Claire on a monthly basis. That would be fair, right? Not a bad idea? Stop joking. My daughter has rejected both of you, so don't engage in stalker-like behavior ever again. Do they see our daughter as an object? Raising them on a monthly rotation is absolutely unthinkable. And after neglecting them for nine years, 
What's the sudden interest? Is there another motive? Honestly, if they truly cared about their daughter, they wouldn't let her go. By the way, Josephine. I couldn't ask before, but what happened nine years ago? Why did you leave me with Claire and go abroad without contacting me? Please tell me the reason. Josephine replied. Surely you've figured it out, haven't you? Ryan and I were deeply in love and wanted to be together. His company was thriving, making a lot of money. I had just divorced and gained custody of Claire, but being a single parent was exhausting. The stress was overwhelming, and I found having a child tiresome. If Claire had been cute, maybe I could have endured it, but she was plain back then. I couldn't bear the shame of having an unattractive daughter. As the daughter of a CEO, it made no sense to keep an unattractive child around. What? You abandoned Claire for such a reason? You carried her in your womb with care, didn't you? Don't you have any maternal instincts? Josephine replied. None. Children are just dress-up dolls for parents. Oh, but if the child is beautiful, she can marry a wealthy person, and then the parents will be taken care of, ensuring a secure future. My mother chimed in. Exactly. Being born beautiful is the best thing for a woman. It's truly a story that would leave anyone incredulous. The idea that being a single parent is exhausting and stressful, or that beauty guarantees financial security, is absurd. What about the responsibility toward the child you brought into the world? Children are not tools for parents' convenience. And my mother, echoing Josephine's sentiments, is equally unforgivable. It's your fault too, mom. Spoiling Josephine led to this. Even at this age, you can't take responsibility for your child's life. Living selfishly, equating beauty with wealth, aren't you ashamed as adults? And this situation is a serious crime. Do you not feel the weight of your actions? Josephine added. Ryan and I just wanted to talk to our daughter. My mother dismissed it, saying. Claire and Skylar are not injured, so it's fine. Neither Josephine nor Ryan has shown any remorse for leaving Claire behind nine years ago or attempting to kidnap my daughters. Even my mother, who condones their behavior, lacks any sense of remorse. Nine years ago, I was bewildered, but now I firmly believe that leaving Claire in our care was the right decision. Understood. Josephine and Ryan, remember that we'll take this to court. I replied. I've always known that my mother and Josephine are eccentric individuals. When I was young, I thought it was fine if I got hurt. But sacrificing their own child for happiness? Unacceptable. Despite the fear my daughters experienced, they show no remorse. Both Josephine, the monster my mother created, and my mother, along with Ryan, should face consequences. Ryan, let's talk about this. You were having an affair with Josephine even before our divorce, right? Ryan retorted. What are you talking about? I got close to Josephine after my divorce from Ellie. I pulled out my phone and showed them photos and videos of Josephine and Ryan entering a hotel together, holding hands and kissing on the street. The dates were before our divorce, leaving no room for denial. Ryan stammered. What is this? I snapped back. This is evidence of your affair with Josephine. Just before our divorce was finalized, I noticed Ryan acting strangely, so I followed him. That's when I discovered he was meeting Josephine. I secretly recorded their interactions for future reference. Did you think I knew nothing? 
I've been aware of your affair with Josephine from the start. Even after our divorce, I found you both several times. When I called repeatedly during my pregnancy, Josephine told you to ignore my calls. And now you suddenly want to live with Skylar? Unbelievable. Ryan mumbled. I regret what happened this time. But Josephine was persistent. Josephine interjected. What? So you're blaming your affair on my persistence? When confronted with evidence of his infidelity, Ryan denied responsibility, claiming Josephine's persistence was the cause. Josephine, furious, wouldn't let it slide. There's more. After Josephine and Ryan coincidentally met us at the department store, they distributed flyers around the neighborhood, spreading false rumors about me and my daughters. Our longtime neighbors, who know my character, were concerned and investigated. Josephine and Ryan were behind those flyers. Josephine protested. I didn't do that. Where's the proof? Ryan chimed in. I didn't do it either. Stop making baseless accusations. I showed them a video sent by a mom friend. It clearly captured Josephine and Ryan distributing the flyers. If bad rumors get out, Ellie won't be able to be with her kids. And then we could get custody. Their conversation, discussing how tarnishing my reputation might affect custody, was also recorded. Upon seeing this, Josephine seemed to realize the situation was hopeless and took a different approach. Ugh. Enough. Honestly, I still don't want kids. But Skylar and Claire can bring in money, right? With their beauty, it wouldn't be embarrassing to have them around. She declared. Ryan interjected. Hey! Idiot. Why would you say that? Josephine retorted. It's the truth. Besides, we share the same bloodline. What's wrong with parents being with their daughters? Ryan argued. But Josephine, you're the one who planned this whole thing. Josephine exposed the truth, and Ryan tried to absolve himself by blaming her for the plan. So that's what it was, a scheme to take Skylar and Claire, turn them into models overseas, and profit from it. These two, lacking both maternal and paternal instincts, couldn't genuinely want to take care of the children. You're both equally guilty. Who planned what doesn't matter? My patience had long worn thin, and just as I was about to attack them, my father intervened. Enough! Both of you, what have you become? His anger reached its peak as he pointed at Josephine and Ryan, shouting. He grabbed their collars and delivered punches, one after the other. Josephine, I take responsibility for raising you this way. But you're 34 now. Not distinguishing right from wrong at your age is your own problem. And Ryan... I regret marrying you to Ellie. I misjudged your character. I'm disappointed in you. Josephine and Ryan, bloodied and sprawled on their backs, had been knocked down by my father's blows. His trembling hands and slumped posture revealed the extent of his anger. Josephine, I sever our parent-child bond. And you, we're getting divorced. My mother protested. Why should I be included? My father asserted. Josephine's current state is undoubtedly your fault. You never listened to me, no matter what I said. And yet, you casually talk about wanting beautiful grandchildren. I've had enough of both you and Josephine. Ellie endured so much until now. I'm sorry. Today, for the first time, I witnessed my usually reserved father yelling at Josephine and my mother. 
It was a side of him I'd never seen before. Eventually, Ryan's parents also rushed over. Before Josephine and Ryan were brought here, I had informed Ryan's parents of the situation over the phone. Ellie, we are deeply sorry for Ryan's actions. We apologize for the great inconvenience and worry we have caused. Ryan's parents apologize deeply to me and my parents. No, the ones at fault are Josephine and Ryan. I will be suing Josephine for abandoning her child for nine years, stalking, defamation against me, and for the damages caused by her affair with Ryan. Wait a minute! I don't have that kind of money! Ignoring Josephine's words, I continued. I will also be suing Ryan for the damages caused by his affair with Josephine, stalking, and defamation against me. It was all Josephine's plan. I just followed her instructions. At this point, Ryan's father punched him. From today, Josephine is no longer my daughter. I will not help you anymore. No! Dad, that's cruel! Think about what you've done. You brought this on yourself. How could you do something so criminal? Do you realize how scared the children were? Ellie, please feel free to claim compensation for what Ryan did. We had no idea about the affair, and we are truly sorry. After apologizing, Ryan's parents forcibly took him away. Josephine was taken back to our parents' home for a serious discussion. Josephine was exhausted and hung their heads in silence. After everyone left and the house fell silent, the doorbell suddenly rang. Mommy. Mommy. The police had brought Skylar and Claire back home. Seeing them run to me and hug me tightly, I burst into tears. Skylar, Claire. I'm so glad you're safe. Mommy was so worried. Skylar and Claire were very brave and well behaved. They explained everything clearly, which helped us a lot. Really? They're usually so clingy to me. Yes, they were very mature. It's a testament to your good parenting. Hearing this, I suddenly felt relieved and started crying uncontrollably. Skylar and Claire gently patted my back. We'll increase patrols for a while. If anything happens, let us know immediately. The officer left, advising me not to overdo it. Mom, are you okay, eh? Skylar and I are here for you. We hugged each other tightly, finally feeling at ease. The following weeks were hectic, but eventually, life returned to normal. Later, I spoke with the police again and hired a lawyer to sue Josephine and Ryan. Although I thought they might have reflected on their actions, I requested protection for Skylar and Claire for a few days. They attempted to kidnap my daughters again on their way home from school and were caught in the act. This incident made the news, and Ryan's company went bankrupt. Josephine and Ryan were sentenced to prison, and I successfully claimed damages. After that, I cut ties with Josephine, and my father divorced my mother. Claire was officially adopted and became my daughter. Since I had raised her as my own from the beginning, nothing changed. Mom, I'm home. Welcome back. There's a snack after you wash your hands. Yay! It's my favorite pudding. With cream on top. Let's eat. The cheerful voices of my daughters echo throughout the house. Just seeing their smiles makes me feel like I need nothing more. From now on, I will continue to live happily and peacefully with my daughters. How did you like this story? Please subscribe to my channel. 
See you in the next video.